Welcome back. In this session, we're going to continue our conversation on pure K of Oat, opening up with the initial question that Hillel has asked us, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? Now, for many of us, that might sound like some sort of a rhetorical statement. If I am not for myself, who will be for me? Uh, sort of a, uh, a chance to exhort us to be our own advocate, uh, to you know, do for us, to advocate for ourselves, uh, to make sure that we understand that um, you know, in a world which is difficult, um, that we need to be the ones championing our own cause. Uh, and I think that there is some truth to that. Uh, but I also think uh, that there are deeper layers, you know, Talmud being such as it is, uh, there are always deeper layers. And here, too, uh, are, is an important opportunity to ply the depths of what it means to say, if I am not for myself, who will be for me, kind of begs the question, well, who am I, after all? Uh, and why should I be for myself? Uh, what is it about myself beyond just my own selfness uh, that makes me worthwhile to be uh, somebody out there worthy of being a champion, worthy of the respect, uh, if you will, or the covet or the uh, kavod uh, beyond just my uh, B'Tselem Elohim, uh, my being in the um, likeness of uh, our creator, um, and, um, you know, that there's validity, but I think that we find an opportunity to go a little bit deeper and talk about the character of the individual. And I draw your attention to two of several opportunities, uh, that Pirke Avot gives us to delve into this in a little bit more detail. Uh, the first one is, uh, in chapter two, verse five, uh, where, Hillel is uh, asking us, uh, or exhorting us, if you will, um, essentially, in a place where there are no human beings, try to be one. And I think that that's a pretty profound kind of a, an idea. In a place where it makes every good argument uh, on so many levels to be for yourself, to be selfish, to be looking at what's in it for me, um, this Menschlichkeit idea comes through that um, there's more to it than just the raw animalistic nature that we all possess on some level, uh, that there's a greater sense, uh, there's a greater purpose, and it's up to us to be able to aspire to that greatness, especially when there are times when that aspiration can be tough because the day-to-day -day slog, the pressures that are upon us, a world which seems nasty, brutish, and short, if you will, uh, is almost begging us to do otherwise. And Hillel is telling us, no, 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 stop. Don't succumb to that. And it ties into what uh, Rabbi Shimon says in uh, chapter 4, verse 13. And again, um, I quote, the crown of a good name is greater than all of them. Now, obviously, you're missing a piece of that. Uh, Rabbi Shimon says that there are three crowns, the crown of Torah, the crown of priesthood, and the crown of royalty. However, the crown of a good name is greater than all of them. So Shimon is, is looking at this as an opportunity to say, this name, this value of one's reputation becomes critically important. It combines with what Hillel is saying to us that there is far more to life than just this simple opportunity to be selfish and to gain what we can uh, in, uh, as an aside, although I don't have this one listed for you, in verse 2, uh, in chapter, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 9, we see um, Rabbi Elazar say one should have a good heart. Uh, again, another exhortation as to what kind of a person are we talking about? This good heart, this crown of a good name, these are all critical components in understanding what my own self-worth truly is in, in the world and then to myself. It's based, it gives us an opportunity to create a reputation. Uh, the reputation uh, is 
others' view of who we are. And that reputation is based on their interaction with us. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a reputation except for the words and the deeds and our actions that come, that precede us uh, as we enter the room based on our history of what we've done in the past, who we are. And those things are based, frankly, on character. The person we aspire to be, the person we are striving to be, that's the person who will create the words and the actions that create our reputation. And that, I think, gets to the heart of this interesting and far more than rhetorical verse from Hillel, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? I ask you to take a moment to spend some time with it and ponder that question for yourself as we prepare to move on to the second part of this conversation. Hi, welcome back to the second part of the conversation uh, about Hillel's first line, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? But let's continue the conversation. I'd like to go back and talk again about if I am not for myself, who will be for me? Traditionally, as we've said, it's about self-advocacy. Uh, that according to folklore uh, the or the common wisdom is that if we don't speak up for ourselves, essentially no one else will. And it's all about self-advocacy. Um, but maybe it's the thing behind the self-advocacy. Maybe it's the thing that we might call self-awareness that creates the advocacy. It's, in other words, it's the knowing who you are and what you stand for that creates the opportunity for us to be advocates for ourselves. Who am I becomes an interesting question, an important fundamental question. What do I believe in? What is that thing at my core that says this is what I'm about? It's a very hard question for us to be answering because uh, frankly, we don't tend to really take the time to delve into it. And yet here we are in Pirke Avot and at this stage of our lives, we're asking this question. We're asking ourselves as boomers, what's going on with my life? What do I stand for? With all of the pushes and the pulls and the tugs on who we are and what we are and how we do and what we do and everybody who's depending on us, you know, what is at our core? What is the thing that drives us, that gives us the energy and the stamina to continue to do all of the things that we do and to answer for all of the things that we need to answer? in the course of our lives, be it in our relationships, be it in our work, but most importantly, what is inside in our core that's going to drive us. Yaakov Aster uh, wrote an article published in Esha Torah uh, on their website actually is where I found it and I believe we can gather wisdom and insight from all kinds of sources. Uh, so I will, uh, and we'll probably talk about that in, a, in a, another another conversation. Uh, but Astor looks at this and says the first part of uh, the equation, if I am not for myself, is really all about finding our authentic selves, the I of the equation, as it were. Because if I do not know the answer to this question, then I really am going to struggle with understanding what is my value? this person who's operating in the world, what truly is my value beyond just doing things? And that becomes a very, very hard question. Because if we can't come to a definitive conclusion, then you really find yourself defaulting to being defined by what others have to say or the identity that they attach to you as opposed to the identity that you've attached to yourself that becomes the springboard for all of your actions, your words, your deeds, and your thoughts. It is, in fact, the other way around, that the things that we stand for are based on our own sense of self and our own, on our own ethics. This is our character, and it is this character that creates our identity. And it is from there that the rest of the world will understand our reputation based on the words and the deeds which are based on this character. People see our actions, people see our character, 
people will understand who we are and the role that we play. Interestingly, Confucius, and I apologize for struggling getting away from the Chinese motif, uh, but Confucius has uh, a saying that was, or was a saying that was attributed to him uh, in his comments on the five principal relationships. Uh, for a society to be healthy, let the ruler be the ruler, the subject a subject, the father a father, the son a son. Each of us has a role that we should fulfill and we have a duty to honestly and competently carry that out. So it's up to us to understand what that role is. Who are we? And what do we bring to the world? And through that, how do we properly fulfill our obligations? Look forward to having a further conversation with you as we move into the second part of Pirkei Avot in our next conversation. See you then. <laughs>